there's a personal reasons and then there are sort of macro historical reasons. I think starting with the macro historical reasons, uh, I think especially in a country like the United States, um, learning and education was a way for people to bootstrap themselves um, into better lives. And I don't, I think education and that ability to bootstrap yourself into a better life was at the heart of how every generation was better off than the last generation in this country. Um, and it was because learning and education created opportunity for people. And that was the promise of this country. On a personal level, my grandfather experienced that. He was an Italian immigrant. He came over in 1911. He didn't know any English. And he used to tell this great story about he had taken in Italy, I think fairly advanced mathematics, beginning mathematics as a child when he was seven, eight, nine, ten years old. So he knew when he, sh when he came here, he knew math. But because he didn't speak any English, they put him at a much lower level. So I think he was operating mathematically at a third or fourth grade level. And because he didn't speak any English, he, he was put in a first grade class. And he used to tell the story about the challenge that he had trying to explain to teachers that he already knew this stuff. And he finally convinced them that even though he didn't speak any English, he knew math. He learned these concepts. And so they moved him ahead. And lo and behold, here's a, here's a kid who came over not speaking any English when he was 11. Within eight years or 10 years, he was the Bentley School of Accounting, became an accountant, and put six daughters through college. And that's because, I think, it was about learning. Because of globalization, we may be at the mercy of any sort of global economic disruption, no matter what country you're in. We're all kind of now depending on each other. So my guess is there's going to be a lot of pressure put on individuals to keep up with economic demand and supply with respect to jobs. And I think when you think about um, how, why lifelong learning is important, I think you have to constantly be creating opportunity for yourself as you move through your career. I don't think we can afford now, and the data is proving this out, you get an undergrad degree, you go to this is where you get an MBA and then you have to then you can then you can afford to take a deep breath, relax, and stop learning because you've somehow made it. We now know that that's folly. That's not true anymore. Well, I'm learning a lot from my new business partner, um, Ron Grant. You know, we we were together in college. Um, we both had completely different career paths from there. Um, he learned a lot of things along the way that I never, that I didn't have access to, just in terms of the situations he was in on, in business, capital B business, you know, deals, business development. And then here's two guys who last worked together 25 years ago in the mid to late 80s um, in a college environment but working on projects and doing stuff together in college, to almost 25 years later, coming back together again, each of us with our own skills. So what I've been learning from my, again, Ron, my partner in my new company, um, is all the stuff that he's picked up along the way. You know, so it could be um, how to value a company, how to position a company in a market to increase its value to investors or potential acquirers. Hi, I'm Russell Sauter, Chairman and CEO of Netcom Learning. Netcom Learning's purpose is to promote the values of lifelong learning. The moment we think we know it all, we stop growing, develop the passion for learning, be a lifelong learner.